Example 39. How many different sets of numbers can we form by choosing six numbers from the set of integers from 1 to 53? This is the same as the number of possible outcomes for a Florida Lotto drawing. What's the probability you would win with the randomly chosen six-digit string of numbers? This phrase in this problem, how many, that phrase makes me think of a counting technique. Whenever I see the phrase how many, I think that they're asking me to use a counting method to determine how many ways something can be done. So once I know that or recognize that in the problem, my next step then is to think about what counting technique should be applied. There's the fundamental counting rule, which is a good general rule that can solve many, many problems easily. However, this particular problem is not going to work out so easily with that rule. In fact, the only way to apply that rule would be to use it, the fundamental counting rule that is, we'd have to use it to derive this formula. And that's quite difficult, so I don't think we'd want to have to reinvent that in order to be able to do this problem. So what we're going to do instead is to learn this combinations rule and see why it fits perfectly with this example. So let's talk about what combination rule does for us. It allows us to figure out the number of subsets we can draw from something, from a set of things. So if we had, for example, 53 numbers like we have here, from 1 to 53, and we want to draw a smaller subset of six numbers from it, that's a classic setup for the combination rule. You have a set of things and you want to draw a subset from that set of things, right? So we just want to take six numbers out of this batcher or set of numbers from 1 to 53. The other thing that's important with combinations is that the order of the things you take out of the set here, so we're going to draw a subset here, the order of the elements we take from that doesn't matter. So what we mean by that is if we took six numbers from this set, let's say we took the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it doesn't matter if we took them in the order 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. They're still considered just to be the numbers 1 through 6. It doesn't matter what order they're scrambled up. All the different scramblings of 1 to 6 would still count as just one subset. So all the combinations is interested in is what elements are in your subset, not what order they're in. So the order doesn't matter. So if this problem meets that requirement, then it should be solved with the combinations rule we have above. And it turns out that Florida Lotto is set up that way. If you're winning um, lotto numbers for the night are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it doesn't matter if when they drew the numbers they came out in the order, say, you know, uh, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4. That order wouldn't be important. It would just matter that you have 1 through 6 on your ticket, and if you had those, you would win. So the order is unimportant. We have a larger set of things, and we're drawing a subset from it. Because of that, it's the perfect fit for combinations. So how does combinations work once you recognize that's the method to use? Well, you see the formula says NCR. The way you want to think of that is, you know, out of N things, you want to choose R things. So think about the C representing the word choose instead of the word combinations. So out of N things, choose R things. Well, how many things are in the big set of numbers? Well, there are 53 numbers because 1 to 53 is 53 values. So the way we're going to set this up is we're going to say, hey, there are 53 things that we're going to choose from. And so out of 53 things, we're going to choose six of them to form a subset of six numbers, right? So 53 things, choose six of them. And then from there, once that's set up, we just follow the structure of the formula. Now, the formula is pretty easy. We take the big number here, the first number, and we put it on top. We follow it with a factorial symbol. We put the next number on the bottom with a factorial symbol. And then we put the difference between the two numbers. So what's the difference between 53 and 6? Well, the answer then is 47, and we put a factorial behind that. And that's essentially what this is doing. So that's our formula. Then from there, how to figure it out. Well, most calculators have a key that does this for you. And if you have a calculator that has that set up, then it's very easy. And I would say um, even a $5 calculator this day, these days has the NCR key or feature in it. You just have to figure out how to use it. But let's assume that you don't have that, and let's work it out you know, by hand first. The way it's worked out is you take the 53 factorial and you start writing it out. 53 factorial is 53 times 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48 times 47. Now I'm going to stop there because I'm going to recognize that 47 factorial is matching up now with the bottom because 47, I put the factorial because I know if I kept going, it would be, you know, 47 factorial is 46 times 45, you know, so on and so forth. So it would continue on. So if I stop the countdown there, because it matches up with the 47 factorial at the bottom, that's going to allow me to do some canceling with these two things. 
That's because the top is all multiplication, right? And if the top and the bottom of a fraction is all multiplied, you can cancel the things that are being multiplied. Now, 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So we have 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 47 factorial. The 47 factorials will cancel out. The 1 doesn't do anything, so we don't have to worry about that. And then if we want to continue to cancel, we can begin to do things like 6 goes into 48, right? We could say I go 6 goes into itself once, goes into 48 8 times. You could put 5 into 50 10 times if you want. You could then say, you know, um, you know, 4 goes into 8, you know, 2 goes into 10, all that sort of thing. You know, 3 goes into 51. You can do that if you want. Or you can just you know, multiply all this out and divide by what's left over if you want. It's up to you. I'm going to stop canceling there because you know, there's just at some point you know, there's not much advantage to doing that anymore. So we're going to take the fraction we have left and we're just going to multiply it all out. So I'm just going to do the top part which is 53 times 52 times 51 times 10, right? Times 49 times 8. And that'll give me this huge number, you know. I'm going to divide that by the denominator 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Well, that's 12 times 2 is 24, so I'm going to divide by 24. Okay, and when we're done, we end up with this very large number for an answer. Let's write it out, and then we'll say it out loud. So it's first 22957480, and that's going to be 22,957,480. Right? So almost 23 million different combinations that are possible with this setup. And that's going to essentially mean that it's very difficult to win the lottery because there's only one winning combination each time they draw the winning numbers and there's 22 or 23 million possibilities basically. So it's very difficult to win. Um, let's go ahead quickly and show how the calculator does this calculation all at once. In this particular calculator you would press 53 first then you would go to find this combinations in the calculator. For this one, it's actually the math button, and then you would arrow over to where it says PRB. A lot of the Texas Interest in Calculators use this PRB notation. And then you would go down to where it says NCR. In my case, that's option three on the list. And then you type the six at the back end, hit enter, and you see we get the exact same answer. Okay, so that's it.